Amen, amen. God bless you, family of God. It's your brother DJ Sam Rock right here on The Blaze, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And of course, you can listen to it anytime as a rebroadcast at www.soulwinningswithaz.org. Um, click over to the radio shows, click the Blaze Bible Study, and then the player will show up. You can go through archives three years back. Amen. And um, we're over 300 strong on the Bible studies and I give glory and honor to God and I'm humbled by that um, that I had the opportunity to speak over 300 times about Jesus the one who I love about God the one who um, is sovereign and about the Holy Spirit the one who um, he the Holy Spirit the one who guides me into all truth amen so I want to welcome you if this is your first time to the blaze get ready take a seat maybe have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea get something to drink tell a friend about the blaze Bible study with your brother Sam Rock and just enjoy what you hear amen if you're taking notes amen take notes because there's a lot of scriptures sometimes uh, I could talk some commentary but I make sure that we get the word Amen. I make sure that we read the scriptures because it's not really about what I'm saying. It's about what God has said and what he has done and how he works that through our lives. Amen. So let's pray and we're going to get into this topic called the power of music. You know, music is designed um, to bring worship unto the Lord. God invented music. He used people to invent the instruments. Amen. We're going to get into the power of music right here tonight on The Blaze. Father, I thank you for the gift of music for the beautiful melodies, for everything that you have created to glorify and to worship you, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that every single musician, singer, worship leader, um, someone who likes all genres of music, rock and roll, rap, reggae, country, whatever they listen to, um, that you, Lord God, will show us tonight that music has power. And the power of music is designed um, to create an atmosphere that is pleasing unto you, first and foremost. And Father God, I know there's other types of music. There's music that people um, dance to that is inappropriate, that's not pleasing to you. But I pray, Lord God, that you have grace and mercy upon us all, Lord God, um, that are just not aware that music was created for your purposes. And tonight, Lord God, I pray by your Holy Spirit that you would touch every single listener. You will um, just guide us and teach us tonight about the power of music. In the name of Jesus, I pray this by faith. And all the saints said, Amen. And if you're not a Christian, uh, you didn't say Amen. That means you don't agree um, with what uh, I just prayed about. It's all good. I just ask that you just listen carefully to what God is saying tonight. And during that time of listening, I ask that you would just soak in all the information and then see what happens. Just see what happens because God's word is powerful, active, sharper than any double-edged sword is able. The word of God is alive. Amen. So, you know, does God care about the music we listen to? There's a big, huge debate with youth and leaders. In other words, um, a teenager would say, you know, I don't have no problem listening to all kinds of music. I listen to Christian music. I listen to regular music, rap, whatever. Why is there a big deal about it? And there's even some Christians that are adults that have been Christians for years that they say, you know, what, that's it's a personal preference. It's a personal conviction. Uh, other Christians say, well, it has to be this style and this style only. If it's not, you know, with this style of worship, then, you know, it's not real worship. So many people have different opinions about the power of music. Uh, so many people have different answers about does God care about the music we listen to? Amen. But we could have opinions all day. But what does the word of God say? Because if it's not the word of God, then basically there's no power. Because I just said that the word is active and alive, sharpening any double-edged sword, right? My words without God inspiring it means nothing. But when you have a word that's inspired by God, by his word, then you're onto something. Amen? First of all, what is music? You might be saying, well, it's a drum, bass, you know, singer. Well, if you read Judges chapter 5, verse 3, it says, I will sing to the Lord. I will sing. I will make music to the Lord, the God of Israel. So as you read through the whole Bible, right, you see it talks about angels making music to the Lord in heaven. Notice it doesn't say that the angels sang. That's another debate. Um, but it says the angels making music to the Lord in heaven, complete with what? Trumpets, blasting and harps playing music was invented to what to glorify God it was invented 
as a way of expressing his majesty. That's why music has such great melodies and music could just take you to a place. Music gets people together. Music has real, a real hold, amen, on our culture. Whether whatever genre you listen to, it could be opera music, it could be um, grunge, it could be house music, dance music, techno, reggae, whatever you're used to hearing or whatever you like, amen. It could be um, Calypso, it could be, you know, whatever the genre is, music moves you. Music creates an atmosphere, music creates an attitude within you, amen. It can inspire you to do good and it could inspire you to do bad. But we know in the scriptures, according to what God has said, that it was created, um, it was invented to glorify God. Music was invented to glorify God. Some Christians believe, like I said earlier, that certain styles of music is a must. And certain styles of music is a, uh -uh, like a no-no. Some people say that rock and roll and heavy metal are totally wrong in the church. Amen. Uh, I learned a lesson on that. Uh, we were invited to uh, a friend of mine's church. He was the youth director at the time, and me and my wife have a ministry called Soul Winners. They invited us to minister in music, right? And we went over there, and there was a, a screamo band, Christian screamo band. Those are the groups that they kind of yell and scream. Um, it sounds interesting. Um, to me, it sounded demonic, but these were born-again Christians. They were on fire for the Lord. They were just young. Um, so they went before us, or vice versa. I think we went after them and and I was like how are all these youth and the youth were into it man they were getting into it I said I can't even understand what's being said so then we did our thing and at the end of the whole event um, the screamo leader the, the head uh, singer I mean the lead singer said hey it'd be cool if we um, get together you know I didn't really understand what you guys were saying <laughs> and I was like hey that's ironic because I didn't understand what you guys were saying and it was like but we saw how the crowd moved. We saw how God was glorified. We saw the move of God. So we would like to do a collaboration. And that just taught me a lesson at that time. That collaboration never happened. I don't know what happened to that group. But um, the point is that I already had it prejudged that that screamo music could not be of God. And it, But the youth received. There was people on the floor just praising the Lord. Obviously, it was spoken. It was sang in a language that they understood. And maybe rap is something that... Um, some Christians won't understand. Some country, maybe some Christians won't understand. Rock and roll, heavy metal, whatever the genre it may be. We got to understand that we didn't create music. God invented music. We didn't create anything. God would create it, created all things and even the music. So we got to begin to measure the music that we listen to by the words. It's not only about the beat. We got to know what the words are being said. Amen. Um, I call him a beat. Or hum a melody and you could just start singing it that's how powerful that song is you know there's certain songs that are embedded in my head no matter how long it's been as soon as I hear that melody I start singing a song and if it's bad I make sure I don't open my mouth at all but you know what I mean music has a way of uh, has a gravitational pull music really um, amplifies our memory um, was where you were when that song was playing who you were with when that song was playing how the song goes you know I know youth that could quote rappers line for line three verses the chorus everything even their mannerisms all that stuff yet they can't quote one verse and I'm not talking about the shortest verse in the Bible where it says Jesus wept because that is a verse and I'm not talking about in the beginning God created the heavens and earth which is in the book of Genesis which is fine and dandy if that's all the scriptures you memorize praise the Lord God could use those two scriptures to bring them to bring you closer to him but what I am saying is that there's a lot more emphasis on memorization of lyrics and songs than there is on the word of God just my experience with youth I know there's fire of youth listening right now that know tons of scripture memorized amen um, there was a, a youth that I heard on the radio he had books memorized whole books the book of James and the book of Philippians had the whole book memorized how about that Amen. And it's hard for me as I get older to memorize scripture, but I'm praying and asking God that he will give me memorization when it's needed, that he will bring up that word that I need when I'm out there evangelizing or witnessing to somebody. Amen. Or, or I'm in need of God's word because every day I'm in need of God's word. So we got to begin to measure the music that we listen to. Realize that the words have power. 
God's word is power, right? The words on music have power too. Not as much power as God's word, but it does have power. If you listen to regular music, secular music, worldly music, what ends up ha- what ends up happening is that you let those groups or that band or that or that singer, you let those people influence what you think. Now, teens will shut you down real quick and that doesn't influence me. Yet, yet they say it doesn't influence yet what they wear, how they wear their clothes, how they talk, how they walk. Amen. The fashion totally is uh, being directed by music for the most part. I would say 85% of the music causes people to dress, act, and speak certain ways. Amen. So that's undeniable. Even though you could say, nah, music ain't doing nothing. But it does. It has a way of influencing us. What is cool and what is not. What do you think uh, people do about their own bodies do you think that their own body they think okay i'm not gonna eat for 15 days because this song said it i hope not yet we know that if we get hungry we have to eat but if a song comes on and says don't eat for 15 days it might cause you to think about that if i could get riches and start him in fame for not eating for 15 days and the chorus is good and the beat is hot and the dance floor is packed it'll get you to think about it hopefully you won't react on it but it will get you to think about it you have to be strong you have to realize that those philosophies those lyrics that that music that is not of god are working their way into the way you think and the way you live it's a truth it's a truth um what is cool and what is not don't let those groups influence what you think and what you do to the temple of the holy spirit which is your body You need to begin to measure the music you listen to by the words and compare them to the word of God. This is this is a great exercise. You know, take your favorite song and compare it to what the word of God says. Um, There's gospel music, even Christian music that I've heard with my own two ears that have nothing to do with the scriptures, believe it or not. It might be a catchy hook, a catchy chorus, nice verses, um, but it's not scripture. Uh, So that will just mean that it's a positive song, inspirational song. But when you compare the lyrics of what you're listening to, to the words in the scriptures and to the word of God, you'll be surprised a lot of times that a lot of songs out there that even have the label of Christian or the label of godly music or gospel have no, absolutely no bearing with God's word. It doesn't even line up. So if the music agrees with the word of God, then listen to it and listen to it a lot. Amen. Because that will really help you move forward in the things of God. It will really help you memorize scripture. It will really help you get into an atmosphere of victory, get into an atmosphere of miracles, get into an atmosphere of prayer. It will help you out because music already has an attraction and the word of God is power. So that attraction and power working together, the power of music. Wow. That would be something really to look after and look for. If the music agrees with the word, then listen to it. If not, Don't listen to it. Why? Because you'll eventually be tricked into believing what the words are saying. I see it all the time. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York uh, in the projects. And rap was already out. I'm from the first generation of rap music. You know, if I mention some artists, you probably be like, who are those people? Some of them are still out from the first generation, still rapping. They look young, but they're in their 40s, early 50s. But anyway... Remember growing up in that environment, man, rap music was only all about, you know, having a good time, partying, having fun. And then something happens in the late 80s, early 90s or the mid 90s about this gangster rap. You know, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to jump you. I'm going to get you in your studio, blah, blah, blah. Then it turned the atmosphere, it turned the genre of rap into something like gang related almost. And people were saying this and that and a the third. And then where you lived was a problem. If I lived in Brooklyn, you lived in the Bronx, and I was a rapper from Brooklyn, and you were a rapper from the Bronx, and now we had a problem just because of words. Words have power, music have power, and if there's directed in a negative way, you're going to get a negative response, a negative reality. But if it's directed in a positive way, and if it's God's word, listen to it, because it's going to get you from a bad place to a good place, and it could happen quick, right? So if the music goes and agrees with God, listen to it. If not, don't listen to it. 
right? It doesn't happen the first time you listen to a song. Sometimes it does, but it doesn't happen all the time like that. It happens slowly. As you listen to it, you're kind of like eating the word. You're kind of like eating the lyrics. You're kind of like digesting the melody over and over again. If you listen to regular radio, amen, they play the top 40 songs over and over again. I don't know how anybody listens to dial-up radio anymore, like, you know, the radio on the dial. And no offense to those ministries and those radio stations, but man, you guys play the same thing over and over again. But there's a method to that. There's a reason for that. Uh, not only because the song is good, it's because they want you to be familiar with the artist. They want you to be familiar with the song. And that's how hits are made because they hear it over and over and they play it over and over again. The result, your foundation in Christ will become unstable if you keep on listening to the music that is ungodly and is not pleasing to Christ Jesus. Point blank period. The Bible says that if you're going to sing a song, let it be a spiritual song. You don't believe me? Ephesians 5, chapter 19 says it. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. It's okay if you want to sing to your mom, your dad, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, your kids. It's all good. But sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. And watch what happens. Can you imagine you singing a song to God and he is pleased by the song that you're singing? What will happen to that song? What could be the possibilities of that song reaching millions and millions of people? What could be the possibilities of a hit song that is pleasing God? Way more possibilities than a song that is not pleasing God. You might be saying, I'm going to stop you right there. I know songs that have sold millions of CDs and went platinum and blah, blah, and it had nothing to do about love, God, the Bible, church, or anything like that. Why? Well, the simple answer and the shortest answer because of lack of time here is that the flesh takes that all in. The flesh loves our mind. Our soul loves worldly music, secular music, music about love, eros love, not agape love, not godly love, but eros, erotic love, sex, drugs, alcohol, power, money. Of course, our mindsets are bent towards that situation because that is the easy way, the supposedly easy way out. But when you're talking about godly lyrics, lyrics that are so powerful that they speak word and that word stays in your heart and mind and actually causes something to happen, causes miracles in your life, a reality to happen. Um, that's a more, more of a reach of any platinum song out there, right? So let the song talk about how awesome God is and how cool God is and how great God is. There's a song um, that we sing in our church called Bigger. That God is so much bigger than our problems. He's so much bigger than our our situation. He's bigger. Amen. And that song just brings us all to realization that, wow, this problem that I have is nothing compared to the bigger God that I have over the problem. Amen. So let the song talk about how awesome God is, how cool God is, how great God is. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your energy glorifying someone else's ideas or somebody else's brand, or somebody else's name, or somebody else's hood, or somebody else's raps, that could like be a waste of time. Uh, there's a higher a percentage of those rappers anyway that don't really live what they're saying. And if they do live what they're saying, killing people, selling drugs, um, getting with women all the time, all kind of different women going to clubs and getting smashed and all that stuff, that's going to end up to be a bad situation. And plus, it incriminates. I never understood how gangster rappers could rap on records and sell millions of those CDs talking about I killed somebody or I sold drugs and I did this and that and they're still out there rapping. If they really did that stuff, do you think that the authorities have enough information or have the confession on CD or on MP3 now enough so to convict them? There'll be the rap business will be out of, of business and I'm picking on the rap business because I'm a rapper, gospel rapper myself, amen, um, and uh, I listen to gospel rap, so I know a little bit more about gospel rap than someone who listens to country all the time. That's what I'm talking about. I'm, all genres have their issues. All genres have music that does not um, edify or glorify God. All genres. But I'm just talking about rap because um, I can, amen, if you give me that um, quick um, opportunity to do that. Thank you. So... Don't waste your energy glorifying someone else's ideas. Don't waste yourself 
um, away with somebody else's experience because that other experience you never had the experience maybe but it's somebody else's experience it's okay if somebody's saying hey i love this girl and i'm gonna marry her one day and i'm gonna have kids or whatever amen that's their experience that's their hopes that's their dreams and they're singing it out and also as they're singing it out they're influencing the way you think and you might be from a broken family and you that might sound different but it sounds good right um can you imagine if they mix that marriage song um, with the Word of God? And now you're thinking about marriage, but the way mar a marriage was created and established by God, then your mindset will be influenced in a, a greater way, in a more positive way, amen, than any other song. So don't waste your energy with songs that are glorifying crime, sex, drugs, violence. Um, that's just going to get you into a place um, of trouble. The Bible is clear that bad company right is a hindrance or bad companies corrupts good morality good character so you could be a on fire christian and somebody you meet somebody and they might be like i'm a christian too you don't listen to this music you don't listen to that music i'll be like nah i know personally i haven't listened to um like hardcore rap and um you know worldly music I, I hear it because you go to stores, you go to places and you hear it. You hear the teens talking about certain songs. I play some songs that are not Christian, but yet they have a message that I could deal with, I could work with, I could preach on, I could have a conversation with. Hey Amen. There's a song that I play. Uh, it's called Here uh, by Alicia. I forget her last name, um, but it's called Here. And basically she's saying that she's in a club. She doesn't know what she's doing there. She had. Uh, she don't need a boyfriend. People are talking to her. Uh, she said, "I'd rather go to a place where they where there's a whole bunch of marijuana all over me." But she's not smoking it. She said, I, "You guys want to have that type of fun? I'll be over here. I could work with a song like that. There's a message there. That's a powerful message." This young lady saying, "You know what? I'm not into all of that stuff. If you want to be into that, I'll be over here." And sometimes we got to set the story straight. I'm a Christian DJ. You want to twerk and you want to um, do Jersey Club and you want to dance inappropriately, half naked and reggae and all this other stuff. You could do all of that, but I'll be over here. Amen. And it's a powerful song. So I do play music that some will deem worldly because it has no um, uh, worship style in it or even word. Um, but there's certain songs like the book of Ecclesiastes, if you read that book, you'd be like, is this, the, is this the Bible? Or if you read the Song of Solomon, you'd be like, is this the Bible? Yes. The Bible speaks of all kinds of topics and areas. And when it comes to music, the Bible speaks of that as well. Do you know trivia? Do you know who invented uh, musical instruments in the Bible? Okay, let me, like, let me not give you too much time because you're going to Google it. <laughs> His name was Jubal. Jubal was the inventor of musical instruments. You can see that in Genesis chapter 4, verse 21. The Hebrews were much given to the cultivation of music. The Jews knew the power of music. Their whole history, their whole writings uh, are abundantly evident of this. Right? So we see that a name was given to the inventor of musical instruments. God chose a man. Jubal to invent musical instruments and we know why because we said earlier that the music was created and invented by God to give him glory so that there would, there would be no uh, misunderstandings amen and we also know that there was a great musician in heaven named Lucifer the angel of light right that was kind of like the worship leader you know I got my heart broken not too long ago, I always thought that was in the scripture that he was the worship leader. It's not in the scripture. It's in commentaries about him. Amen. But he was uh, a bright, brilliant angel, beautiful angel um, that was in the presence of God. Um, worship was happening through music, through song. Um, he had elements of music in him, ingrained in him. So that's why I guess people say he was a worship leader in heaven. But he saw that God was getting all the worship and he wanted that. So jealousy envy got into his heart into his way of thinking although he was listening get this he was listening to pure worship music right and they were adoring and loving on god and pleasing god 
some something found a way a melody got into his mind that was different from the melody that was being sang about God Almighty, God the Father, right? And he got jealous, envious, and he sinned. He said, I want that worship. When you don't understand the power of music and you put that before, say you want to, uh, you're following an artist and every time that artist comes out with a song, um, you play it, you buy it, you get the apparel that goes with it because nowadays there are more independent artists than ever in the history of music because it's the new music industry right now that you could be independent and sell millions of CDs and sell out concerts and I see it all the time. But now you're following an artist and everything they do, everything they play, everything they put out, you get. And now who are you serving? It, it could really throw you off. Even if you're following a gospel group, a band, an uh, artist, make sure that not only do you follow them, but you put your priorities in order. Follow Christ. Because if they're following God, the Bible says, follow me as what? As I follow Christ. Christ first. You put God first before the music, before the artist. Amen. You're going to have a beautiful and wonderful time. And you're going to experience the power of music in your own life. Right? So, in your life. Amen. You're going to be like, music seems to have an important place in life. You know that every culture, I don't know of one civilization or one culture out that has no form of music and that form of music is attached to a form of worship. Think about it. I don't ever, you know, I've been, I, okay, I'll give you an example. I played, I DJ, so I was hired to DJ in New York um, last year or the year before, I think it was last year, and the couple were Christian and they wanted all gospel music and they have a playlist and everything beautiful but the groom said hey there's no absolutely no dancing at our wedding reception no dancing i was like well you're hiring a dj i'm going to be playing music and the playlist has some like up lively beats and up lively music but you don't want no dancing he was like yeah because you know there's a group of christians that don't believe that we should celebrate that way and there's another group of Christians that want to party. So I have them both. And to honor my wife's side or however the side was, I'm going to just kill it all and say no dancing. Well, when we were setting up, um, the best man of the groom came up to me and said, man, we got to turn up. He was born again and he was full of the joy of the Lord. Praise the Lord. He said, we got to turn up today, man. We got to dance, right? And I said, hey, um, yeah, you're you're." Yeah, you're the best man. You're the best man, so you must be close with the groom. He said, oh, yeah, that's right. No dancing. So there are times, amen, that music doesn't cause dancing. But it does cause worship because we were playing some good songs. And people were giving glory to God. As a matter of fact, there were musicians there that sang worship music, right? They sang worship unto the Lord. So it was a great time, great atmosphere. The people that were working at the banquet hall, um, they were blessed. Amen. And they knew there was something different about the way we celebrated marriage and the music we played than any other. It's a beautiful thing to be a Christian DJ. I know a lot of people think that's corny. <laughs> but the, the, the best thing I think about being a Christian DJ is that I could play the alternative of turn up music that leads people to fight and have sex and drink and smoke and take drugs, I could play the alternative that will give you a supernatural high, will fill up your cup, will satisfy your every feeling, amen, and it, you'll leave out of there like, wow, what just happened? I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, I didn't have sex, but I had a great time. Oh man, there's so much there. I have a great dream that God has given me, amen, to throw an all-night Christian party, amen, that all genres, all gospel, all night, and just have a great time because part of music and the power of music is celebration. We need to be the most celebration, celebrated or the celebration uh, host of America, of the United States, of the whole world as Christians. Because we know that we're celebrating the fact that Jesus is coming back. Amen. So that's a quick Bible study on music. Amen. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the blaze. It's your brother DJ Sandrock. I really 
hope that you would take this information, look at the scriptures for yourself. Amen. See what God will do. Pray about it. If you're stuck listening to all kind of music that you know, something inside of you saying, you know, that's not pleasing God and you shouldn't be repeating that stuff. You shouldn't be dancing that way to that kind of music. Ask God, take it to the Lord and he'll show you how to address those issues. As a matter of fact, if you pray and ask God how um, to deal with it, I believe God will answer you and he will answer you in his word, through his word, through people. And you won't be missing anything, but you'll be gaining it all in him and Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. And remember, God is good. Peace.